Welcome to the Pursuing Points Podcast, where it's all about the pursuit of credit card points and miles today so that you can travel the world free of charge tomorrow. And now, your host, Peter Foti. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 15th Pursuing Points Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Peter. Uh, I realize it's been a little while since I've recorded one of these, and uh, I think I may have started the last one like this, but I want to start this one the same way and just say thank you to everyone who has sent me email questions or feedback or left reviews on iTunes. I think that's really awesome. Uh, I'm glad that people uh, enjoy when these come out and that so many of you wish I did more of them. Um, Truthfully, I do as many as sort of uh, I'm able to uh, when time allows. Hopefully that can uh, turn into more in the future. But uh, for now, you know, the goal is around one per month. Um, But anyway, we've got one today. I'm pretty excited about it. I, uh, I've got some stuff here that I want to talk about, and I'm actually going to be signing up for a new card on today's program. Uh, But first, why don't we talk a little bit about, uh, I'll just give sort of an update on what I've been doing, both in terms of travel and uh, credit cards. So as far as travel goes, I have definitely been traveling less this year. Uh, A lot of that is because I'm traveling less for work. Uh, in 2017 than I did last year. That was sort of uh, to be expected um, for those of you who may be new to the show. So last year I traveled quite a bit for work and in the process of traveling a lot for work and personal um, and spending a bunch of money on my Delta Platinum Amex, I was able to get Platinum Medallion status with Delta. Uh, The status has, has served me well so far in 2017 uh, generally speaking, I get upgraded the majority of the time. Um, you know, unfortunately, I spend a lot of time flying in and out of Atlanta. And so, you know, certainly if I pick the wrong day or the wrong time, I, I'm going to end up sitting in the back rather than up front flying in and out of that city. Just because, you know, in Atlanta, there's a lot of diamond medallions there. So it's just tough to get upgrades. But other than that, I think it's gone really well. Uh, you know, I enjoy the status obviously the sky priority and everything else that comes with it. I've done episodes on that in the past. So if you want to check those out, please do. Uh, And if anybody has any questions for me about the Delta status, feel free to reach out uh, via email or on the website, there's a contact form. Uh, But this year it's looking like I am just barely going to make gold status. Uh, Part of that is I'm once again going to hit the spending bonus on the Delta Platinum Amex. And the way that works is after you spend 25000 you get 10,000 MQMs. And an MQM is a medallion qualifying mile. Uh, and generally, you can only earn those by flying. So, you know, your ass has to be in a seat for you to earn those miles. But with this credit card, as well as the Delta Reserve uh, Amex, you can earn it uh, after hitting certain spending thresholds. Uh, So with the Platinum, it's $25,000 for $10K and $50,000 for another $10K. Uh, So I will get both of those this year, and then that'll put me over the threshold for gold um, unless something crazy happens uh, and I just, you know, get a bunch of work trips at the end of the year, which I don't think is likely. Uh, I will set up for gold this year. And like I said, I think that that's expected. I, I don't think I expected to fly as much this year as I did last year, uh, both personally and professionally. And, you know, in 2018, we'll kind of see what happens. Um, Again, I don't expect to travel that much in 2018 uh, for work. Uh, Personal, you know, I am in the process of launching a new company. So I expect to do a little bit less traveling uh, just because of that, right? Trying to save some money and whatnot. So that may dictate, uh, you know, sort of how I uh, spread out my spending, you know, certainly if if I don't expect to earn, say, Delta Gold, I probably am not interested in spending, you know, 50000 on one of their cards just because, you know, I, I, I could spend that money on, say, the Freedom Unlimited, the same 50000 and get uh, 75000 uh, chase points, which are pretty valuable. So that's kind of where I'm at there. Uh, other than that... I uh, I recently completed my first day at a Ritz Carlton, uh, so that was and that's the first time in my entire life uh, 
I really enjoyed their properties. Very nice, very fancy, very upscale. Um, you know, the, the thing that uh, sort of annoys me about places like that is that, you know, you spend all that money to stay there. And I was only there for a single night. Um, and yet, you know, at the hotel bar, uh, two gin and tonics cost about $40. Uh, they wanted, you know, $10 a day for Wi-Fi. Um, you know, I think it's one thing to shell out a large sum of money. In this case, it was about $600 for the night. And I booked it through the Ultimate Rewards portal. So I ended up using some points, but the cash value was around $600. Um, so to do that and then to still sort of be nickel and dimed for Wi-Fi and $40 drinks is, you know, I don't, I don't love that. Um, it did sort of motivate me to think about getting the uh, Ritz-Carlton card through Chase, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, but with that card, in the first year, you get gold status uh, with the Ritz, and that entitles you to things like complimentary room upgrades, uh, late checkout, in uh, complimentary internet access, etc. Um, I don't know, or at least don't foresee myself saying it too many more Ritz Carltons in the you know foreseeable future. Uh, that was kind of a one off. Uh, but if I thought I was going to stay at more of them, that card, which we're actually going to talk about, uh, is definitely something I would seriously consider. And uh, before I segue into the cards that I want to talk about, I do want to provide an update with a card that I've already that I already have, uh, which is the Chase Sapphire uh, Reserve. So the Reserve, again, for anyone who's somewhat new, is last year they had a one hundred thousand point uh, sign up bonus on this card. Uh, it earns three points per dollar travel and dining, and I actually signed up for it live on this program. Uh, and the annual fee, both for myself and a lot of other people who took advantage of the sign-up bonus last year, uh, recently came up. So one thing I don't like is that the annual fee came up, and I was provided no uh, notification, right? So I didn't get an email or text or anything saying like, hey, your annual fee is coming up for renewal in seven days, 30 days, whatever. Um, now, if I didn't want the card, I could call Chase and say, I didn't. I wasn't expecting to have to pay this annual fee. I was planning on canceling it ahead of time, and I would expect that they would refund the annual fee and close the account if I asked them to. Uh, I am not going to do that. I still value the card a lot, uh, but I feel like they could probably do a better job at letting you know. Uh, now, generally, what I do is I call them after I get the card to figure out when the annual fee is, and I write it down. Uh, for whatever reason, I didn't do it on that card, but. That's what I would recommend doing is once you have your card for you know a couple of weeks or a month, call the company, ask them when the annual fee is due, and so that you know, and then you can write that down for yourself. Uh, but if anyone from Chase or these other companies are listening, I think that that would be a nice feature to let the consumer know when they're going to be charged the fee. Uh, as far as why I'm going to keep the card, so uh, again, the card earns three points per dollar on dining and travel, which is more than the Sapphire Preferred, which is two points per dollar on dining and travel. And so far this year, I have earned about uh, 15,000 points on travel and about, looks like 16 or so thousand points on dining, Uh, which means that if I was using the Sapphire Preferred and spent the same amount of money, I would have earned about 10,000 points less. So 10,000 points you know, a face value is, is, is about 100 bucks. Uh, if you factor in the 1.5% uh, bonus, or basically the 50% bonus that you get uh, when you redeem through the Ultimate Rewards Portal, uh, that comes out to 15,000 points, which is about 150 bucks. And of course, you know, we've still got about three and a half months left in this year, which means that it looks like, you know, I will have earned about, you know, say between 20 and 25,000 more points with the reserve than I did the preferred. Um, and of course, I was able to maximize my $300 travel credit with the with the reserve, um, which means my effective annual fee on this card, because remember, the annual fee on the reserve is $450 minus the $300 travel credit brings you to $150. And then the delta between that and the Sapphire preferred is only $55. So that's really... You know, everything after 55 is gravy. Everything below that, as far as what you're earning, 
uh, is sort of a waste because if you couldn't earn more than the, that that number of points, you would have been better off getting the preferred. But in this case, um, you know, because it's going to be between two hundred and two hundred fifty dollars for me, uh, the card makes a lot of sense in my wallet. So you know, I, I do get emails from people who ask me, you know, should I keep this card? And it doesn't matter what the card is. Um, I think generally speaking, people have a lot of cards. Uh, and I am not necessarily one of those people. I tend to focus on sort of quality over quantity. I, I prefer to just have a couple cards. Most of them have high annual fees and I want to put most of my spending on those cards. And, and for me, you know, that's the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the Delta Platinum Amex, and I have some other Chase products. I've got to discover it. I, I have other cards, but I don't really get too excited about having 10 different cards with 10 different bonus categories and trying to figure out which one I should use at every place I go to. Um, You know, for me, like I've said in the past, I am trying to earn points uh, to redeem on luxury travel, right? And so that's first class tickets or Ritz Carlton hotel and, you know, and and the, and I can do that just using my Sapphire Reserve and just using my Delta Platinum. Uh, those cards get me everything I want. Um, obviously, everybody's different, uh, but as far as and, and as it pertains to whether or not you should renew, the the point that I'm trying to make is that you know you have to figure out what your goal is. So why are you trying to earn points, right? Or why are you signing up for ten credit cards? Because if, if the reason you're signing up for 10 cards is because me or the points guy or one, somebody told you that you should, that's probably a bad idea, right? So figure out what it is that you want to achieve with these cards and with the points and then maximize for that. And I think once you do that and you figure out what it is you really want, things become a little bit easier both to manage and, uh, and uh, you know, the, the, the whole process becomes much simpler at that point. So uh, for me, I don't like to have too many cards. And it, again, it has nothing to do with like a credit score or anything like that. It's just uh, I know what my goals are. And I, the cards that I have, I think, um, are the best cards for helping me achieve those goals. Now, that being said, I am considering getting a new card, which uh, I've already made the decision on which one I'm going to get. But we're going to talk through the options today. So the first one is the MX Platinum, which I have already, uh, depending on how you look at it, wasted or spent a lot of breath on uh, on this on this podcast. Uh, I actually tried to sign up for it one time live. Uh, I was given a pending result. I called Amex. We went through the process. They were ready to approve it, but they couldn't guarantee me that I would get the sign up bonus. And I don't plan on rehashing that whole story, but basically uh, about seven years ago or so, I signed up for the Amex Platinum, not expecting to get it. Um, at that time, I didn't really have much of a job. So when I got the card, I never even called to activate it. I called them and asked them to cancel it immediately. But because Amex has a rule about only being able to get the sign up bonus one time per card, I was worried that I wouldn't get it. And because the the Amex representative on the phone could not guarantee me that I would get it, I decided to cancel the application. Um, and that card, so, so the reasons why I might consider getting it are you get $200 a year in Uber credits and it's spread out. You know, you get a little bit of money every, every month. I think it's like $15 a month or something, plus like 20 in December. You get Delta lounge access. You get the Amex Centurion lounge access. And you get five points per dollar uh, when you book some travel through, I think it's AmexTravel.com. Uh, you know, the big downside, of course, is the card has a $550 annual fee, which if I was guaranteed the sign-up bonus of 60,000 points, uh, could be offset at least in the first year. But that's not a guarantee. Uh, I, I don't love this card. I think that they could be doing more and doing a little bit better. Uh, you know, they try, they're trying to compete with the Chase Sapphire Reserve but truly, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that the reserve is still far ahead of this product. Uh, so I'm not going to get the platinum today. The second card is the Chase Ritz Carlton, which I mentioned a little while ago. 
So this fee is, or excuse me, this, this card is interesting, right? It, it has a $450 annual fee. The travel credit that it provides um, is $300, but the way that it works is you have to call in order to apply the credit. So with the Sapphire Reserve, you spend the money and automatically the credit uh, is applied, right? With the MX Platinum, uh, it's automatic, but you have to select an airline. With the Ritz-Carlton, the fact that you have to call them every time you want to apply the credit, I find to be annoying. Now, I, I wouldn't consider that make or break for me, but what is sort of make or break is that the $300 credit is only to be used towards baggage fees, seat upgrades, etc. And unlike the Sapphire Reserve, which the $300 travel credit could be used on anything, right? Tickets, hotel rooms, rental cars, um, and that one's applied automatically. So it's not that, 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 that that's necessarily a deal breaker, right? I could spend $300, uh, especially on, say, seat upgrades, right? But I don't love that I have to call. I don't love that it's only for certain things. Uh, the the bonus um, categories on this card, you get five points per dollar at Ritz Properties and SPG Hotels. Uh, you get two points per dollar uh, when you buy tickets directly from the airline uh, or rental car agencies and restaurants. But for me, I'm probably going to be using my Chase Sapphire Reserve at those places anyway. Um, you know, the main reason I think to get this card is, you know, you get the... Uh, you you can upgrade three times per year to the Ritz Carlton Club. You get gold status in your first year for free, and then if you spend ten thousand dollars a year thereafter, you can continue to maintain your gold status, um, and you get a one hundred dollar hotel credit. Um, it doesn't say if you get one of those every year or if that's just on the sign up bonus. Uh, but speaking of the sign up bonus, you get two complimentary nights at any participating tier one through four hotel after you spend four thousand in three months. Um, you know, this is this is certainly a premium card. If you stay at Ritz Properties often, the uh, status benefits alone are probably worth it uh, for $450, which, uh, as a note, is not waived in the first year. So I, I like this card. I, f- I definitely think that this is a card I, I could have in my wallet someday, but I don't believe that that day is going to be today. And with that, let's move on to the third card, which is the Delta Reserve Amex. Uh, This is another one that I've talked a little bit about uh, on the show. And the thing that's interesting about this card is that it is mainly a souped up version of the Delta Platinum Amex, which is the one that I have. So... With the Platinum, you get the the 20,000 MQMs if you spend 50 grand. With this one, you get uh, 30,000 MQMs if you spend 60 grand. Now, around this time last year, maybe a little bit later, but I I considered getting the reserve, but I wasn't positive that I could spend 60,000. And if you can't spend 60,000, frankly, I don't really think that this card is worth it. Um, And so I decided not to get it. Now, you know, hindsight being 2020, I think I would have been able to um, spend that much. And and so I would have gotten the 30,000. It wouldn't have made the difference between gold and platinum status for me this year, which means that I'm happy that I made the decision not to do it. Uh, And then the other big benefit of this card is that you get lounge access, similar to with the MX Platinum. Uh, The earning structure is pretty basic. Um, the annual fee is four hundred fifty dollars, and the other th- and the thing that kind of sucks, and the reason I don't really like this card is that it's one hundred seventy five dollars for each additional card holder. Uh, now, most of that I believe is related to the fact that you get the club access, but uh, you know that that kind of annoys me. I do have additional card holders um, that I that I sign up for my cards, and so that would be kind of cost prohibitive for me uh, to do that with one hundred seventy five dollars per person. So, um, you know, moving forward again, as I mentioned earlier, I don't expect to do as much travel next year. Uh, and so for that reason, I'm not going to get this card. You know, I, I would love to see them do a little bit more with this card. Uh, you know, the 
for instance, the uh, what is it? The the United Mileage Plus Club Card, I believe, gives you 1.5 points per dollar on all purchases. Something like that would be nice um, with this card. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, American Airlines had a 100,000 point bonus on their premium. Uh, uh, American Airlines card, which also got you lounge access access and things like that. So I would love to see Delta. You know, I know that they recently came out with a new card, the blue card, which is sort of their lowest tier one. But, you know, I, I would like to see them do something interesting with the reserve uh, to prop it up a little bit in this space because it is hyper competitive. Uh, but I have no reason to believe that they will. That's just sort of what I'm hoping for. So I'm going to pass on this card today and with that, we are going to get to the card that I am going to apply for, which is the newly released, uh, although I guess not recently announced. My understanding is that this was announced about a month ago, and it is the Bank of America Premium Rewards Credit Card. Now, this card, I've been reading you know, different, different blogs and whatnot, and I'm sure you all have as well. Is this card worth it? And the prevailing sentiment seems to be no, but... I tend to disagree. So why do I disagree? Well, I disagree uh, at least for the first year. So we're going to talk about all the benefits of this card. And I will say that chances are this is not a card I'm going to be paying the annual fee on um, year over year. But that also might not necessarily be true. And I'll tell you why. So first of all, let's go through the basics. You earn an unlimited two points per dollar on travel and dining. For me, frankly, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to get three points on my Sapphire Reserve. So that is kind of a moot point for me. 1.5 points on everything else. I may or may not take advantage of that. You know, I have the Freedom Unlimited, which earns the same. I've got the Delta Platinum, which I use to try to earn status. So as far as like a daily spend, I may or may not uh, turn to this card. Um, The sign-up bonus, 50,000 points. After you make 3,000 in purchases in the first 90 days, 50,000 points is 500 bucks. So the, the main uh, drawback of this card, at least based on what I've read and the, the opinion that I've formed, is that the points are always worth one uh, a penny per point, no matter what. And so, you know, 50,000 points is 500 bucks. But I think that for a $95 annual fee, that's a, that's a decent statement credit or, you know, whatever you want the, the redemption to be. Uh, at least in the first year, okay? Uh, After that, you know, whether or not this card fits into your wallet, I'm not exactly sure. You know, I think that there are other competing products that definitely give it a run for its money. Um, If you're just straight up interested in cash back, uh, you know, the city double cash card is two points per dollar. Um, And then as far as travel cards go, I think there's definitely better cards. Uh, This Chase Sapphire Preferred, which has the same exact annual fee, is is a much better card, uh, in my opinion. Um, what else? So the points don't, the points don't expire. Um, you get a $100 airline incidental statement credit. And so in reading their terms and conditions, uh, it says you are eligible for a statement credit of up to $100 each calendar year. If you make qualifying airline incidental transactions to qualify, you must use your premium card, blah, 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 to pay for the incidental transactions. Allow seven days for qualifying to post. You are responsible for payment for all charges. Uh, your account must be open. Okay. Qualif- so qualifying transactions are those purchases made on domestic originated flights on certain U.S. domestic airline carriers, which include preferred seating upgrades, ticket change slash cancellation fees, check baggage fees, in-flight entertainment, onboard and food and beverage, and airport lounge fees. Uh, airline ticket purchases, mileage points, gift cards, etc. Those do not qualify. Now, the one thing that's not exactly a red flag, but certainly they they leave some room for interpretation here. It says certain U.S. domestic airline carriers, and they don't specify. Now, I'm assuming that Delta is on that list because they're one of the biggest uh, domestic airline carriers uh, in the United States. So I expect that they will be on there, but they don't they don't lay it out explicitly. Um, but what's interesting, so what's interesting about this card, because you get the statement credit every calendar year, I'm signing up for this card in September, which means from now until the end of this year, 2017, that's a $100 statement credit, or well, excuse me, $100 uh, 
uh, yeah, airline incentive statement credit. And then again in 2018, I get another $100, right? So when you take both of those $200, or $100 in 2017, $100 in 2018, plus the 500 or well, 50,000 bonus points, effectively $500, that's $700 in value, and I'm only paying $95. And of course, that doesn't even factor in the additional, what is that, 4,500 points, say, which is another 45 bucks that I will get when I uh, spend the required amount. And so, you know, at the end of the day, 750 bucks, not bad for a $95 annual fee. Um, you know, could you do better? Maybe. Will I cancel this card next year? Maybe. Um, I would say that if I had to decide today, I'd probably say yes. But at the same time, if it's easy enough for me to get that $100 statement credit, effectively, I'm paying five bucks a year for this card. So that's not a bad deal. Um, but obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get there. But for today, $750 approximately in value for $95 annual fee means that I think this is a card worth signing up for. And that's what I'm going to do. So I've already got everything filled out on my screen. Uh, I am a Bank of America. Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention the potentially most important point of this card. And frankly, I skipped over it because it doesn't really apply to me, but it may apply to you. So Bank of America has a thing called preferred rewards. And with it, you can earn 25 to 75% bonuses on every purchase. So You could earn up to 3.5 points per dollar on travel and dining and up to 2.62 points per dollar on all of the purchases if you are in, say, the platinum level, which means you have an account balance with Bank of America slash Merrill Lynch of greater than $100,000. They have other bonuses, um, you know, if you have greater than, say, $50,000 and $25,000. So that may or may not apply to you if it does then certainly the earning potential on this card improves dramatically and it may make a lot more sense as a daily spender. Uh, for me, I don't really fall into these categories, so uh, it doesn't make much dif- much of a difference to me, but check that out. It might be something that you're interested in. And if it is, cool. Um, so anyway, like I said, I, I, have, I am a Bank of America checking uh, customer, so I've got everything filled out here. Uh, hopefully my session does not expire Let's see, I've got my additional card holder. Review your information. Let's see what it says. Um, One thing too, so if you decide to apply for this card, uh, if you have any questions, you know, email me, leave a comment. I would love to hear your guys' opinions on this card. Uh, Both as, you know, do you think it's valuable? Do you plan on signing up for it, et cetera? Um, We'd love to get your feedback. So, okay, I'm... I'm on the final page. I'm going to go ahead and click submit. It is reviewing your information. Now that I think about it, this is probably the first card that I've signed up for since the reserve. Again, I had the failed platinum uh, issue. That was about, was it six or eight months ago or so? Um, So hopefully this will go through and this will be my first new card and I think a year, which is quite a while. It says it's still reviewing the information. I think we're done. Let's see how we did. We are approved. So that was easy enough. Congratulations, Peter. You are approved. Uh, so you will get your card in seven to ten days. You can activate it, use it immediately. Blah 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 blah. And that's that. So Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Um, I do have sort of a backlog of questions from the email that people have sent me, although I think I did cover some of them today. Uh, But again, if you have questions, if you have feedback, please let me know. I'm glad that you guys enjoy the show and hopefully I can start doing more of these. Um, That's all for now. Thanks for listening.